talking about the everlasting covenant, the new covenant that God has given to us in the person of Jesus, the Lord. He has given us a covenant of peace and life. And that covenant has been given to us by grace. You and I are recipients of God's grace. This is the time of God's favor. Every one of us has received the grace of God. And the question is, what am I doing with the grace of God? What does it really mean to me? What does God's grace mean to you? What does it mean to me? I want every one of us to listen today to God's word. Would you please open your Bibles today to the New Testament? And we're going to read from 2 Corinthians. And I'm going to begin reading from the 5th chapter. So if you have your Bibles, would you please open them? And beginning at verse 16 of chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. And I'll continue reading through the 6th chapter, verses 1 and 2. And so if you would like to, we honor God by standing and giving Him our attention. And so would you please stand with your Bibles open. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, beginning at verse 16. From now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. All is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ not counting men's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Chapter 6 and verse 1. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Thank you. You may be seated. We enter into God's covenant by grace. And if you open your Bible dictionary and look up the word grace, you'll find a definition probably worded in this way. Grace, defined as the unmerited favor of God. The unmerited favor of God. It is by God's grace that we have entered into this great new covenant this everlasting covenant that we have through Jesus the Lord. And here we read that there are those who receive God's grace in vain. Those who have received God's goodness and God's favor, and they do so in vain. How is that possible? Well, if you have your Bibles open to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse 15. The scripture says that Jesus died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. We are to live for him. We are to live our lives for the Lord. When we fail to live for him, we have wasted God's grace. When we begin to live life to please ourselves, and that can happen at any age. That can happen as a young person. That can happen as an adult. When we allow ourselves to forget what God has done for us. When we lose sight of our eternal perspective. We are to have an eternal point of view. 
Notice what Paul said in verse 16. From now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. We waste the grace of God when we live life from a worldly point of view. When we allow ourselves to get caught up in the things of the world. The things that are temporary. The things that are visibly seen. Money. Possessions. Worldly power. Those are the things that the world offers. But those are the things which are temporary. The things of God. They are eternal. Peace. Joy. Righteousness. Those are the gifts of God. And by His grace, the unmerited favor of God, we have entered into this covenant with Him. And we are to have a heavenly, eternal point of view in life. By grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the what? The gift of God. It is the gift of God. Romans chapter 6. Would you turn there with me in your Bibles? Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans, the sixth chapter. Beginning at verse 22. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The gift of God, the unmerited favor of God. This is grace. Now it's interesting as we read the scripture in 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, the Bible says, this is the time of God's favor. This is the day of salvation. This scripture reminds us of a time in the Levitical law that was once practiced by the Jew. In Leviticus chapter 25, the Bible says that every 50th year, a cycle of sabbatical, seven by seven years, that would be 49 years, and then the following 50th year, there would be a time that would be inaugurated by the blowing of trumpets on the final Day of Atonement. When the Day of Atonement was coming to close, there would be the sound of trumpets, and what would take place every 50th year would be a time of healing in the nation, a time of restoration and the people. It was called the year of Jubilee. And in the year of Jubilee, everyone's debts were canceled. If you had lost property, your family had lost property because perhaps you took a loan, you needed assistance, and you borrowed from your fellow, fellow Jew, and you couldn't pay off your debt, then perhaps you would give as equity, you would leave, lend off your home, your property, and then you would work to repay. But in the year of Jubilee, it would be a great time of restoration. Everyone's debts were canceled, and everyone's possessions, their property that they once had as a family, it was all restored to the family. It was a great time of celebration, and it was announced at the close of atonement. It was a period of grace. People were forgiven of their debts. People were reminded that they were but tenants on the land that God had promised them. The land of promise was owned by whom? God. The land of promise that God gave to Israel was owned by God. The Jew was but a tenant. God had given them a land to journey, to take care of. But on the year of Jubilee, everyone was reminded 
the faithful Jew, a faithful Jew from the heart, God's people. For every person who knows God knows God from their heart, whether they be Jew or Gentile. For we are all part of Christ's body today. But the faithful Jew would celebrate God's grace and be reminded that they were but tenants. All their possessions had been given to them. Their property had been given to them. The land they lived on had been given to them by God. And they were reminded in the year of Jubilee, if you read chapter 25 of Leviticus, you'll read that historical account. It was a wonderful time because everyone was reminded to, by grace, to give back as God had freely given. They were reminded that they had received the land of promise by God's grace. And they were to treat others by the same grace and mercy. And it began after the Day of Atonement. We as Christians have entered into this covenant with God because of His atonement, which means Jesus, by His death on the cross, provided our forgiveness. His death on the cross covered our sins. And His death and His life through His resurrection, He has brought us into a relationship with God. Remember, every covenant of God reminds us of who God is as our Savior. He is the one who does what first? He delivers, He provides, and He forgives. That is the function of Savior. He is the one who delivers or heals. He is the one who supplies or provides. And He is the one who forgives and restores. As our Savior, we have entered into a covenant, a relationship, an agreement with God by grace. This is our time of jubilee. For Jesus died, and He is our atonement. There are no other atonements. The year of atonement ceased when Jesus came and He fulfilled the law of God completely and perfectly. When He died on the cross and gave His life as a sacrifice, He satisfied the holy requirements of God's law. And in Jesus, we now celebrate, we blow the horn of the year of Jubilee because this is the time. Now is the time of God's favor. Now is your time. Now is the time, even though in the world we see such discouragement, distress. We need to turn off the television news that's filled with such negativity. And we need to turn on the news of God, which is, this is the day of God's salvation. We live in a time, yes, there are problems in the world, and yes, there are grief and problems that we all, burdens that we bear. But nevertheless, we are to remember that God has given us a time of grace, of restoration. Can you think of it? In the Jewish time, on the 50th year, every 50th year, those who were in debt, their debt was canceled. Their property was restored. Relationships were restored. Some who acted as slaves because they had to pay back their debts, they were slaves no more. They were free. And for that reason, when Jesus came, He was to preach to the captive, you can be free. What was He doing? He was telling us that through Him, we celebrate our jubilee. This is the period of God's grace. Today, now, now is your year of jubilee. And we should celebrate. We should rejoice because we have found favor with God. Remember the angels who came and they announced Jesus' birth to the shepherds. And remember what in Luke chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will to men. That is God's favor rest upon you. Jesus came to bring us God's favor. This is what is meant 
in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, In the time of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. This is your time. Don't, listen, don't let the grace of God pass you by in vain. The grace of God should change us. It should cause us in our hearts to change. We have found favor with God. Remember the story in Luke chapter 19. What was his name? He climbed a sycamore fig tree. What was his name? Climbed up. What was his name? Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. And he climbed up. And who was he looking for? Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus came by and he looked up to Zacchaeus and he said, What? Today? I must go to your house. Notice what Jesus said in Luke chapter 19. He said, I must go to your house. Don't let you don't miss that. He said, I must go to your house because listen, Zacchaeus needed what Jesus could do, restore his life. Yes, he was the district tax collector. He was a wealthy man. But he needed a spiritual restoration. He needed a relationship with God that only Jesus can bring. That's why Jesus said to Zacchaeus, I must go. I must go to your home. Because he and he alone can restore us to God. He alone can bring salvation to your home. To your marriage. To this church. Jesus is our sufficiency. He is who we need. He is who you need in your life. He is our favor with God. The Bible says that Jesus went home with Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus, in response to God, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to restore what I've done. I've cheated people. And what I remember I've taken to them, I'm going to give back a portion. I'm going to give back more than what I took. He repented. And what did Jesus say to him? Today, salvation has come to your home. Today. Exposed to the grace of God. And God's grace is poured on our lives. And we don't do anything with it. We don't respond. Why would that be? Well, and the Bible says that there's many people like that. They're stubborn. They don't want to change. We live today in a world where people don't want to change. Only God can change the human heart. Are you listening? Only God can change the human heart. God can make you what you cannot be. Do you believe that? God can make you what you cannot be. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense what God is saying to you? I can make you what you cannot be. That means God is calling us to be His people. And His people are not of the world. They're in the world. His people, they sing a new song. They have a song in their hearts that God has given them. Carefully listen to what God's grace says to you. God came to be with us as His people. He called us to serve Him. But many times the grace of God is wasted because we allow the things of this world to penetrate our hearts and we forget what God has done for us. We as God's people have been called by His grace to serve as Jesus served. This is the time of God's favor. This is the time in your life, the hour of God's salvation. Don't let it pass by. To the young adults here today, Landon, Brian, this is the time of your salvation. But you, you decide if you'll be like Zacchaeus and climb the tree and say, I'm looking for Jesus, that's all that matters. He's my sufficiency. And little short Zacchaeus, 
He climbed that tree because he gave God priority. He left the world that he once knew behind because he had his eyes fastened upon Jesus and he knew that Jesus, the grace of God, was what he needed. And Zacchaeus was changed that day. But there's a lot of people, they allow Jesus to pass by. We used to sing a song a lot in our invitations. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Pass me not. I can tell you, young men, you're looking at somebody who's not led the example of what this message is all about. Land in the rhyme. I've wasted the grace of God. He never intended on me failing him in ways that I have. Don't make this fool's mistake. You don't get years back. You don't get time back. God's grace was not freely given to us so that we could gamble with it or we could set it aside. God's grace was given to us, listen, so that we would walk with Him and love Him and be thankful that we have earned, not by our good works, but by what Jesus did on the cross, He earned the grace that we have been given, His favor. It was earned, but we didn't earn it. Jesus earned it. When He died on the cross and was raised again, we have now been given God's grace. We enter into a covenant with Him, not because you earned it. God never called any of us because of our abilities or because we earned it because of our achievements, but God has called us into a relationship with Him because of His grace. And don't waste it. Don't waste it. I remember one time, I can't remember his name, was in the church, a man's body had been so disfigured. His face, I believe he had been in one of the wars, and I can't remember which one, Gulf War. And his body had been so disfigured from a blast. And he walked up in front of the church. His body moved side to side. He could barely walk. His body had been so physically damaged. His mouth had been so physically damaged. He had been through so many, so many surgeries to repair his physical body. And he stood in front of the church. And he said basically this message to us. He said, I got blew up. What's your problem? What he was saying was, he did not let the grace of God go in vain. He was going from church to church and sharing his testimony with people. Doing the best he could with what God had given him. And I sat there in guilt and shame because I knew what he was saying. What's your problem, Paul? You haven't been blown up physically. I'm doing a lot more for God than you are. Don't waste the grace of God in vain. You and I, let's go out this week. Let's go out into our neighborhoods, into our grocery stores, into work, into school, into our families. But don't waste the grace of God. Don't waste it in vain. But with love, with thanksgiving in our hearts, let us go out as it is our year of Jubilee, and seek to forgive, seek to restore, and freely give what God has freely given to us. And the closing message, I believe, that God laid on this my heart to share with you and maybe others, this is a time of God's favor. And many are struggling today with problems in your life. Grief, despair, discouragement. I was watching the news this morning and saw so many, many millions of people in our country humbling themselves, asking for food. That burdened 
So many people who are hurting today in the world around us. And maybe you're one of those persons, maybe not because of lack of food, but because of some other, some other problem you have. And this is God's message to you. This is your time of jubilee. Put your faith in God. Because God wants you to know this is His favor. Don't in pride. Don't be stubborn. But humble. Humble yourself before God and say, God, I receive your grace. Not in vain. But I want your grace to be at work in me. I want to give back what you've given me. And I'm going to receive your favor. I need your favor in my life. I need your favor at home in my family. I need your favor in my life today in health. I need your favor in my relationships with those I love. Restoration. Time of forgiveness. Time of healing. This is the time of God's salvation. This is the year of Jubilee in your life. Don't let the grace of God pass you by in vain. We're going to stand and have a hymn of invitation. Dear Lord, I pray that now at this time, this would be where you would speak to people's hearts of all ages. That Father, you would speak to each of us who are listening today. Lord, that we would not waste the grace of God. That it has not been given to us in vain. But let us, Lord, be at work being busy. Doing what pleases God. Faithfully serving you. Father, I pray, give this invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand?